Hi everybody. Um, let me know if you're there. And once I know you're there, we'll get going. It tells me I'm live. Um, but I don't know if I want to carry on talking to myself. So give me a thumbs up. Okay. We're there. Yeah. Hi, Ella. Nice to see you. And to see all your comments after the other day on Facebook. Emily Bell. Yeah. You guys are a little bit further away from me now. So like if I squint a letter. Okay. Let's get going. If I squint, um, Melanie, all the way in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, so what I said was, I'm going to do this for a couple of days and then um, see if I can do this in 10 minutes to talk about something for my book. And um, so I can't promise you it's going to be 10 minutes, but I'll do my best anyway. And so this morning, what I want to speak to you about is, um, Megan, nice to see you. Uh, what I want to speak to you about is um, uh, yesterday morning, I felt God give me these three words, and they were paw, uh, pause, position, and partner. And so what I'm going to try and do, uh, I'm going to take the word pause and speak to you for, uh, about pause for about 10 minutes, because not just because of where we are at in the world, that we've all actually been put on pause, but that um, I feel you got to hear me out that I don't believe God has put us on pause because if I said that then I would be saying I believe God sent the virus but what I believe is that um, God uses the opportunity in our lives and when when we when we let God use opportunities like this then he's building things into us for something to come so when God said pause position and partner um I felt he, he was saying to me that in this time of pause where you know when you have a whole lot of stuff that you prepared for the year ahead and suddenly it's all postponed when you have all these dreams and all these plans that you've made and suddenly it's like the pause button has been pressed and you wonder what is going on and what why where's God in all of this and so when he said to me pause he said to me he was building things into us and the next word was position. And I'm not going to talk about position now, but the reason, um, uh, maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, the reason he said pause is, is he's, he's getting us into position so that we can partner with him for what's up ahead. And they're exciting things up ahead. So let's get into the pause, first of all. Um, I've, got a, I've got one of my books here, uh, Fashion for the Days to Come. And I wrote this. Um, it was in 2000, uh, July 2018 that this book was published and when I when I look through the the titles of the chapters I spoke about hindsight on Saturday but when I look through the titles of the chapters I see how God was speaking to me already the first chapter is called a divine pause and in the chapter I speak about um, all the things that God does when we find ourselves in a divine pause, when God presses the pause button on our lives and he brings us into a place of rest. And it's not a time of punishment, you know, like, uh, you know, go and sit in the corner because you've done something wrong. It's a time of um, pruning and a time of preparing so that we are going to be correctly aligned for what's about to come. So let's get into uh, pause. Um, I, one of the things we need to understand as the church today is that we are a chosen generation and um, the scripture is 1 Peter 2 verse 5 um, and it says you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ and then it talks about behold the lane Zion a chief cornerstone and you know Jesus is the chief cornerstone and then it says, um, to those who are disobedient, the stone has become uh, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And then it says in 1 Peter 2 verse 9, but, and he's talking to you and I today, you are a chosen generation. And I want to focus on the chosen generation, but it goes, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. And the reason is that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And 
when I read that, the word chosen generation just jumped out at me the other day. And you need to understand that you, you're here. I said this to God once, not so long ago. Um, wouldn't it have been better if I was born in a different generation, in a different place, in a country that was maybe safer than South Africa is? I told you to get your tea, so you can have your tea with me if you like. Hi Sally, Gloria, Mohammed, it's great to see you. Um, so I said this to God, wouldn't it have been better if I was born in a better time where people were nicer and things were safer and you know just in general and the answer that God gave me surprised me and he said no you are not here by mistake in this time and in this place. And the reason God has put you where you are today, I don't know where you find yourself, the journey you've been to, um, cheers Chantal, um, the journey you've been on, and I can see I'm not going to do this in 10 minutes, um, but the journey you've been on has brought you to where you are in this moment in time. And this moment in time um, is going to be recorded and remembered forever. Jennifer from East London, yay. Um, you know, this we're going to remember this our kids and our grandkids and their kids are going to be talking about the year 2020 when the whole world went into lockdown by the way are you praying for boris johnson i hope you are um that's just a, a side note let's not sit back and wait and watch and see what happens let's use the authority we've been given as believers to pray for presidents of countries when they need it the most um Okay, so we're a chosen generation, and, and I started writing another book uh, a couple of days ago, and the first chapter is called A Chosen Generation. And the reason is that when we see that chosen generation, it's okay to think that um, we, we're chosen because we're going to do amazing exploits in these days. Yes, we are, but you've got to understand that the first reason you've been chosen is because you've been chosen to be loved. That God looked at you. He looked at Corin Christensen and Tammy and Lydia Duplessis and everybody else watching. And he said, Melanie, yeah, and he said, I see where you are now and I've chosen you to love you and to use you and that you will experience my grace and my favor. Okay, so you've got to understand in a time of pause that this is one of the most important things. Jared, this is one of the most important things that God is, is emphasizing in our lives. We talk about self-care. You know, take time out and look after yourself. But you've got to understand that it's in this time that God is releasing some of his care to his people so that we will be so established in who we are that when the things that he's preparing for us, we're actually walking in them, there's nothing that's going to throw us off track. Okay, apparently that's 10 minutes. So do I stop or do I keep going? Um, if somebody says stop, I'm going to stop. But nobody's speaking to me now, so we're going to keep going. Sue, nice to see you. Jeremy Bell, all the way from Brisbane. Carrie, wow. Okay, so here we go. So in Luke chapter 4, remember I'm talking about pause. In Luke chapter 4, is there's a story of um, Jesus in Luke chapter 3 is baptized in the Jordan. Okay, Tammy, I'll keep on going. Jeremy Bell, I'll go. Marlies, keep going. Okay. Sue, lovely to see you too. I won't stop. Okay, here we go. In Luke chapter 4, uh, Luke chapter 3, Jesus is baptized in the Jordan, and then this, this voice comes from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You all know the story. Then, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus is led into the wilderness by the Spirit. Now, to me, this is what happens to a lot of people. We get this amazing victory in our lives. We hear these great words of promise from God, and suddenly it's like the pause button has been hit. I don't know if you feel that. I felt like that at the beginning of lockdown. I felt, well, I felt like this in, in, in the UK when, when I felt that God had given me the dreams, the desires of my heart to, to travel to the UK, to meet up with all the kids in London. And, and it looked like everything was falling into place. And then suddenly the world went out of control. And there was talk of travel bans and um, things were cancelled and we had to come home. And I sat and I thought, um, have, has my life been put on pause? And then I began to realize and remember all the things God had said to me before. Remember on Saturday I spoke about remember. I spoke about uh, how God, I thought about how God had spoken to me 
And he said, remember the things that I said to you. You know, God has already spoken your future into being while you're sitting here on pause. And that's what he's preparing you for. So don't be one of those whinging, whining Christians um, who, you know, God said this and he's not doing it now. And look at my life. I think it's time for us all to grow up and accept the fact that we can't do anything now. We can't help God bring our future closer. We've just got to sit in the pause and let him establish us in our faith and strengthen us in our faith. Okay. So, so here Jesus is led into the wilderness and this is where he has the big, the tests, you know, the, the devil comes and tempts him with all those different things. I'm not going to read it now, but Jesus overcomes in the wilderness. And the very next thing he does is he, he, the angels come and minister to him. And then he goes to find a synagogue and he walks into the synagogue and he, he, he picks up, he looks for the book of Isaiah in the scrolls. It wasn't, he wasn't going, you know, we get our promise box out and we say, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, I'll take this one. And we look at it, no, no, I don't like that one today. So we pick another one. Jesus was very intentional. He had just had the showdown with the devil in the wilderness. And it tells me in verse, uh, in Luke chapter four, he came out in the power of the spirit. That's very important. I almost forgot that. He wasn't beaten up, bruised, dragging himself out of the wilderness because the devil had, had, the battle was so hard, he came out in the power of the Spirit. And this is where God's, uh, this is what God's preparing us for in the pause now, that we're going to come out in the power of the Spirit. The devil's going to try all kinds of things and, and send lies your way and temptations your way and distractions and all kinds of things. But if you'll just focus now and listen in the pause to what God's saying to you and stock up, you know, like people went stockpiling. Uh, for all kinds of things when when the, we were told it was locked down some of you didn't get enough of the stuff you really wanted and now you're finding out um but fortunately we can still go across to the shop um but you know if we'll just stop in the pause and say okay god i recognize what's happening here i'm not going to focus on the things the enemy is doing i understand i'm chosen for this i'm part of this chosen generation and so what jesus did is he said he stood up, he read the book of Isaiah, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The, you know the scripture. The, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he, he reads off all the rest of them. And then he sits down and he says, Today in your presence, the scripture is fulfilled. In other words, this is me. But you know what he was doing there? He overcame in the, in the wilderness. He was first recognized by his father. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He was led into the wilderness where he overcame by the word. And then he goes in, he makes a declaration of war. That's what he was doing. It wasn't just, this is a nice scripture. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is who I am. He was making a spoken declaration of war to the enemy. To This is me. This is who I am. And these are the footsteps that you and I are going to follow in, in the season that's to come. If we're not doing it now, we, the season that's to come, God is positioning us for the greatest revival and the greatest harvest that planet Earth has ever seen. And as you can see, Rory's at home, but it's, he's fine. Um, so, so this is what's happening while we're waiting in the pause. The first thing is alignment. And maybe I'll talk about, I'll have to talk about that next time I do a live thing because positioning and alignment are, are very closely. This is what alignment means. Arrangement in straight lines or incorrect positions, a position of agreement or reliance. You know, who are your allies? Who are the divine relationships that God has given to you in the season we're going to? Who, who has he prepared you to walk along with? Or who, is, who has been prepared to walk alongside of you so that you can help each other and we can all fulfill this, all this, you know, whatever God is going to do with us. Um, this is this is also being lined up in the season. Our thinking. What do we believe about God and what He says? If you just stop in the pause and you you find out what do you really believe? Do you really believe the word and what He says? Our expectation is being aligned or lined up. When you have expectation, you create space for God to move. That's what happens when we're being aligned in the pause. There's do you either have an expectation to see the goodness of God, the breakthrough of God the miracles of God, the things you need in your life and in your family's life, you have an expectation for that, or you have an expectation to see all the bad. You know, this is just going to get worse. Nothing is ever going to change. I'm never going to get healed. 
is your expectation in the goodness of God and in the word of God and what he promises and the ability uh, that God can do it. Um, the other thing that's being aligned is our prayers are being lined up, aligned, lined up. The prayers that we're praying, when we have an expectation to see the goodness of God, in this time of seemingly nothing happening, you need to understand that the spiritual realm doesn't go on pause. God doesn't go on pause. God is still moving behind the scenes. And um, there's no pause happening around us. We just can't see it. I, I covered that on Saturday. So the things we're praying uh, are when we begin to understand that God's preparing us in the season, that he's got something fresh and something different for us, that um, our prayers are going to hit the target. We're not going to be praying those... Uh, if it be thy will prayers, or I'm not really sure if God's hearing me or going to do this, but we pray it in faith. That's what happened. And the other thing that's happening is obviously preparation is taking place for what's to come. Um, we need to understand this, and you, we've got to get a revelation of this. It's going to sound so basic. My tea's getting cold. Excuse me. When we don't believe, when we think this is just a big fat coincidence in the world, and that God, God's not going to rescue us, or, or God doesn't have a good outcome for his church, you know. God hasn't changed his mind. And so, when we believe that, we need to understand that before we know it, life is going to come back to normal. Maybe not the normal we knew before, but it's going to come back. We're going to go out there, carry on with our lives, do our shopping, um, go to church, and, and carry on doing our ministries or whatever it is we do. And before we know it, we're going to be out there and it's going to be at a faster pace than it was before because human beings are going to feel the need to catch up. And so take this moment, take this pause that God's given us. I feel it's a great opportunity. It might be uncomfortable, it might be unfamiliar, but if we take this opportunity that we have now, that, that everything is in, in pause, we're going to be so ready to go when God says go. Because we're gonna, we're gonna have a, a, we're gonna be fully persuaded is for us. We're gonna be fully persuaded. We have a purpose uh, and a position in this chosen generation. And now um, I'm gonna read you something quickly out of my book because didn't, isn't that what I said? Okay, so I'm just gonna skim through some things. Um, it's a, a divine pause. This is what I. This is the little caption at the top of the page. It's chapter one in fashion for the days to come. And before I read it, I want to say to you, I did make an offer that um, my books are going to be available because I can't post them to you because even though Aramex couriers are operating, books are not considered an essential service. So I can't, somebody has already ordered all my books and she paid for them, pre-ordered them, and she's willing to wait until I get more copies printed and when Aramex, when the world is back to normal. So anyway, but I made an offer that you, and this is not a, uh, I'm not doing this to sell my books. I'm doing this because as I, as I said before, I looked through them and I saw how God was already speaking to me. So this is, I want to help to, to give you some um, equipment and some encouragement and some strength by what God has said to me. But you can get them as PDFs, which means you can read them on a tablet, an iPad, on your phone, your computer, and they look exactly the same. Uh, the same little things on the top and the whatever it is, um, but you just can't hold them. So you can message me for, don't comment on here, but message me for, it's a lower price as well. Okay, so this is what I said here. This is the time to let God show us that he doesn't require our performance and he's more interested in our heart condition. That's very important. God wants to know, God wants us to know, as I said, we've chosen to be loved. We've chosen to be to have experience his grace and his favor and he's more interested in the condition of your heart than what you can do for him so um i'll read this to you what do we do when we don't know what to do and i know none of you have ever been in that position it's just me when it seems that life has come to a standstill or we've hit a brick wall we're doing all the right things but can't find the breakthrough we need the same answer comes from heaven every time. It's one word, and the word most people don't enjoy hearing, wait. So, I know it doesn't sound very encouraging, but um, let me read you this. We know this too shall pass. Doesn't it sound familiar? And this was written over a year ago. We know there is more for us. We know that God has a better plan for us. We know we will feel better soon because joy comes in the morning. 
still even knowing all of this, there are times when we need to be able to recognize that God allows us to reach a divine pause or a quiet waiting season in life. We take time out to think, to allow ourselves to feel. You're allowed to feel things in the season. We're not robots. It's not taking time out that's the answer or even the problem. It's what we do during that pause in our spiritual lives that matters. This is when we need to resist the urge to whine. How many of you have not whine, you know, but how many have how many of you have had to resist the urge to whine? I can put my hand up. When things take longer than we would like them to and we begin to wonder why. So I'm not going to read any more there. Um, so what I'm what I'm doing is as I see, I can't do 10 minutes, but I can do 20 minutes. I think maybe a little bit longer than 20 minutes. So if you're happy to join me um, at 11 o'clock for the next few mornings. But what I will do is um, I, I'll put a little notes thing up on Facebook again. Um, I'm going live the day, you know, the day before. But let's say um, just keep watching for me going live. I always save it anyway, but it's nice to have company while I'm sitting here, not talking away to myself. It's much better than recording it. But um, so tomorrow I'm going to talk about position and partnering with God and I'll try and do it in 20 minutes. So anyway, um, also one of the reasons I like doing these things is I feel I've got company. Rory's great company, I must tell you. He's working on his car outside, but I feel as if I've got company here. So and I realize I'm a people's person and I need company. So please stay, uh, you know, stay connected, keep watching for the live things and if I do encourage you, let me know. Um, if I'm waffling and it's a whole lot of nonsense, let me know in a private message, please. Um, also, what I, what, I, what, what I really want you to do, I want you to listen up, you're still here. If you've read any of my books and you have something that was important to you, that ministered to you, will you let me know? If you've got some questions um, that you'd like me to cover, give me some homework, give me something to do. Um, and if I can answer your questions, I'll help you. So I want to wish you, I'll pray for you, that you have a fantastic day. Jennifer, it's so nice to see you. Jeremy Bell, I said hi. All the way in Brisbane, Jeremy. I hope Emily's somewhere there too. Um, Sunay von Nickerk. Um, I tried my best not to get distracted by all the names popping up there um, so that I could do this in 10 minutes. And I, I failed. But I don't think you mind. So anyway, I just want to say I love you all. And um, I hope to see you soon. Someone said, don't go, Tammy. Um, unfortunately, I think I have to go. Carmen. Um, it's encouraging to be reminded of the goodness of God. Yeah, it is. I'm telling you, we, sometimes we forget when we go through challenging times that we forget about the goodness of God. And one of the things is to remember what he's done before. That we're still here in this place, still chosen for this generation. And um, I think it's exciting. I'm going to end now, but Lydia, I love you too. Um, it's, I think it's exciting that we've heard people preach and say these things. I said it myself. I think there's a chapter in one of my books about being world changers and history makers. You know, we use these, these terms, but here we are. We are making history. I love you too, Chantelle. Here we are, you and I, the people who we thought God would never choose. You know, we, we thought we couldn't do it. We couldn't be the preachers or the people who'd go and share the gospel with people. Um, we thought God would use somebody else. And he's chosen you and I, no matter our backgrounds, our ages, whether we've been to Bible school, how many pedigrees we have behind our names. Um, he chose you and I in whichever place we find ourselves to be history makers. So take, make the most of the opportunity of this pause. Make sure you do what God asks you to do, which is just wait. Um, be a blessing wherever you can be, however you can be. And um, I want to say have a great day. You know, if you've been to my meetings, you know I like to waffle at the end. And I don't like to end, but I feel I have to end now. It's, we've gone now for 20 minutes, which wasn't too bad. So um, have a great day. And I'll be looking out for you all tomorrow. Louisa, I'll be looking out for you all tomorrow. Love you lots. Bye. Remember, let me know if you were encouraged. Love you. Bye.